it was good. I'm going to rewrite our definition for simplify so that you can see this on, uh, on video later if you've forgotten. One, we need to write things as mixed radicals. Two, we need to combine like radicals and like terms. If there are any like terms, we'll put them together. Three, We need to rationalize the denominator if there are radicals in the denominator. And finally, once we've done this over and over again, if we have a fraction, we need lowest terms. And the hint to do that is often factoring. So, part A. We look at the radicals that we have, root 6 and root 2. I hope so. No, I haven't. Yes? Is that me? Yes, I am recording. Good. Whew. That would have been disastrous. Yes, we are recording. All right. <laughs> That'll be on the video. So looking at this right now, we've got the root 6, we got the root 2. We check. Are those lowest terms mixed radicals? Yes. So that part's good so far. Do we have any like radicals on the top of our fraction, any like radicals on the bottom of our fraction that we could put together? No. Do we have a radical in our denominator? Yes. So we're going to need to get rid of that radical in the denominator by multiplying by the conjugate this time because we have a binomial. So we'll start by multiplying 3 root 2 plus 4 on the bottom and 3 root 2 plus 4 on the top. It's good to put these in brackets as well. As well. Now the bottom is a difference of squares, so you can sort of use the shortcut of saying if I multiply a plus b times a minus b, that's the same as the first ones multiplied together minus the second ones multiplied together, because the outside and the inside when you FOIL will disappear. So if I just multiply the first ones, 3 times 3 will be 9, root 2 times root 2 will be root 4, and for right now I'll write it like that because we can simplify that later. You can see that that square root's going to go away, right? then minus, and 4 times 4 is 16. On the top, we're going to have to FOIL. The first ones, 4 times 3 root 2. Remember, for multiplying radicals, you multiply the coefficients, or the numbers in front, and you multiply the radicals. So we'll get 4 times 3 is 12, and we have still a root 2. When I multiply the outside ones, 4 times 4 is 16. The inside ones, multiply the coefficients, 2 times 3 is 6. A root 6 times a root 2 will give me a root 12. And finally, multiply my last ones, 2 root 6 times 4. 2 times 4 is 8, and I'll still have the root 6. Okay, now we have done some rationalizing the denominator. We're going to go back to step one for simplifying. Are there any here that we could write as mixed radicals more simplified? Yes. Well, for one on the bottom, can you see square root of four is two. Two times nine is 18 minus 16. Are you all right if I do that all at once? So there's going to be 18 minus 16. And leave us with 2. On the top, are there any radicals that we could write as mixed radicals? Which one? Well, 6 is going to be 2 times 3. 
The square root of 12, yes, 6 root 12. Oh, I see what you're saying. So yes, because square root of 12 is root 4 times root 3, right? So I'm going to rewrite all of them. I'm going to have 12 root 2. We'll stick with green. 12 root 2, still there. I'm going to have plus 16 still there. But now because 12 is 4 times 3, this 4 is going to change into a 2 when it comes out in front. And it's going to hit that 6. 6 times 2 is 12. And I'll still have a root 3 plus 8 root 6. So now we've gone back and did number 1 again for mixed radicals. Are they all mixed radicals? Yes. Do we have any like terms? No. Has our denominator been rationalized? Yes. So we're done the green part of simplifying. But over here is our fraction in lowest terms. Is there something in all four of those that you could factor out? You could factor out a 4, right? If I take out a 4, I'll be left with 3 root 2's plus 4 plus 3 root 3's plus 2 root 6's, all divided by 2. Now I look at my fraction in front. Is that in lowest terms? No, I could simplify that because 4 divided by 2 is 2. Everybody see how I took a 4 out of each individual one? OK. So when I say, when I look at all of the coefficients here, which is a 12, there's a 16, a 12, and an 8, say, is there a factor that divides all of them? And so the number that I see, oh, I could, the biggest one I could pull out is 4. And then if I pull a 4 out of 12, I'm left with 3. If I pull 4 out of 16, I'm left with 4, so 12, 3. 4 out of 8 leaves me with 2. And then my fraction in front, the 4 over 2, can be simplified. And you could leave your answer either. Whoa. That was weird. OK, 2 in front, and you still have the 3 root 2, the 4 plus the 3 root 3 plus the 2 root 6. This would be in factored form, and that would be full simplified marks. Or if you wanted to redistribute that 2 throughout everything and say 2 times 3 is 6 root 2, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 3 root 3 would be 6 root 3, and 2 times 2 root 6 would be 4 root 6. Either one of those would be fine as our final answer. I think the textbook, which one does it have at the bottom? The second one? I'm going to move back up, and we'll do the second one. So again, I'm going to look up any of those mixed radicals I can simplify. I'm going to look on the top, and I'm going to look on the bottom to see if any of them are like radicals that I could put together. None of that's worked so far. So finally, I'm going to look at the bottom and say, do I have roots on the bottom? Yes, I do. I need to rationalize the denominator. And since it's a binomial, I'm going to need to multiply by the conjugate. The same thing on the top and the bottom. The key thing is, is that sign has to change. If it's plus, you do minus. If it's minus, you do plus. Now, the bottom's going to be easy because, again, you remember that when multiplying by the conjugate, it makes a difference of squares. So just the first ones multiplied together, that'll be 9, and root 2 times root 2 will be root 4. Minus, and when I multiply the second ones, 2 times 2 is 4, and root 3 times root 3 will be root 9. And you can see, once we simplify that, that we will have no more square roots on the bottom. on the top, binomial times a binomial. So you're going to have to FOIL this out. 
3 times 2 or 2 times 3 will be 6 root 6. Do the last ones or the outside ones, sorry, minus 4 root 9. Inside ones, minus 12 root 12. And finally, the last ones, negative 4 times negative 2 will be positive 8. Root 6 times root 3 will be root 18. On the bottom, yes, we will have, this will be 9 times 2, which will be 18, minus 4 times 3, which will be 12. On the top, are there any radicals we can simplify now? Yeah, the, four, the root 9 will just become a 3, and so 4 times 3, this will be minus 12. Root 12 is root 4 times root 3, and root 18 will be root 9 times root 2. So that square root of 4 will mean a 2 will come out in front. And that will mean I'll have minus 24 root 3. And that root 9 will mean a 3 will come out in front, so I'll have plus 24 root 2. Bottom is going to be all over 6 because those are. Is there something I can factor out of the top? I can factor out of 6. Nice. And then I look at my fraction in front. Is that lowest terms? No. 6 divided by 6, well, those will simplify to just be 1. And our final answer is just root 6 minus 2 minus 4 root 3 plus 4 root 2. Questions you can do are question 10 and question 13. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. All right.